Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Creative Block Podcast. I'm here with Blake, Blake Cherubini. Cherubini, uh, one half of the Cherubini brothers. Uh, it's uh, you know we'll get into kind of what you do, but I've like a big fan of like not only your work but like even just the cool stuff you guys do with mountain biking. It's you know obviously we'll 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 get into like the details, but I've you know found a new love with mountain biking over the last year and literally looking came across you guys literally just by looking up you know what are the local trail systems really? in Ohio. yeah so i mean that's literally how i got you know exposed to like horns hill and everything that you guys got going on so with that being said uh give an introduction to our guests to our listeners who you are what you do and kind of go from there oh that's a tough one because i do a lot of things i can't really pinpoint one but like you said my name is blake cherubini and i'm 21 years old currently from newark ohio um, I would, it's hard to put a label on myself, you know, I'm a, uh, mountain biker, like you said, that's like, I guess, first and foremost, what people would see me as, like if they went on social media, they would see that I'm primarily a mountain biker. Also content creator, photo, video. I do a lot of freelance stuff for people. My family has owned a digital marketing business for like the past 20 some years. Okay. Started out with web design. Now it's probably 80, 90% digital marketing, Facebook ads, Google ads, SEO, stuff like that. Um, and then other than that, like, you know, I'm just out there trying to have some fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's this definitely, uh, I, I feel like it's, I, I literally like, I, I feel like I live vicariously through, through you guys because it's, you know, a lot of content that you guys put out and a lot of things that you do is very fun. And, you know, me being exposed to like this whole, like, action sports world has been like very for me like i'm in my early 30s so like for me being exposed to all of this now i'm like i never really thought that i would ever like have any interest in it growing up i never did um and literally you know like i was telling you before we started recording i you know had a family you know one, one of my uh, my wife's cousins was like hey you know was at the house one day had a you know had a like really dope mountain bike i think it was like a uh, it was like a common saw meta or something that he had just bought. And, you know, he was like, oh, yeah, take it off for a spin. He was telling me how much he had, like, spent on it. I'm like, that's fucking ridiculous. That's a lot of money. <laughs> People <laughs> like, don't know. You know, I'm like, I, you know, I literally have, like, uh, you know, a Walmart bike. That's literally what I've always ridden with the kids and stuff growing up. And literally got my first taste of that. I'm like, oh, this is dope. And he's like, yeah, you want to go riding, you know, on the weekend? And, you know, we went to, like, one of the local trails when riding. And it was, you know, I went with, like, my little janky bike. And it was fun. And literally, like, I got hooked on it and yeah. went out, bought a bike, bought, like, I'm, like, we're on our second, me and my son, we're, like, on our second bikes. And you know how that goes. We, oh, yeah, we, you we go got, through all the bikes. <laughs> you just, we, we got sucked in and, like, it's been fun. Like, even now, like, my son's, like, doing racing and stuff. And so it's it's been a fun uh, journey so far. And, like, it's, I feel like a lot of people kind of picked up different, like, uh, skills or, like, different hobbies mm -hmm. during, like, the whole beginning of the pandemic yeah i mean bikes are still sold out from everything it's like, um like it, it's funny because like we talk about it now and like my son has like outgrown his is starting to outgrow his bike he's like grown like almost eight inches like in the last like year and you know we're like looking at bikes and stuff i'm like damn like i'm glad that we like bought our bikes when we did yeah. because we got them like you know right right before the beginning of like the riding season last year and like even now it's just been uh it's it's ridiculous that it's yeah, there's hardly anything available. And like if, you know, if you do find something, it's it's all like the super high end stuff or, you know, very rarely it's not your size. So it's like I'm I'm very glad that like I we got what we got, you know, when we did, because it's. Yeah, it's crazy to me that what are we like over two years yeah, into it now? Man, we're, and everything is still pretty much in the same spot that it was. Yeah, so it's it's been interesting. And like, I mean, I feel like we can get into like talking about bikes and stuff. But I, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to like have you on here was because not only you know do you I enjoy the the you know the fun that you guys have with the content that you do like on YouTube and social media with mountain biking and like action sports in general. But you know, you're a lot of times the the man behind the camera with a lot of these you're putting them together. So um, you know, a content creator in your own right, and you know, like you said, you. I didn't realize that you were kind of already exposed to like the whole marketing side of things and in that whole kind of creative world as well. So I guess talk a little bit about what that was like growing up with, with that, you know, like family business and how did you get started with like photography and like videography? Um, 
So growing up, I never really realized what my parents did. I knew like they had a job, they made money. We obviously lived in a, a normal house. We could afford to do most like things, just like normal things. But I never really quite understood what they did until I started to get like into high school. You get to that age where you like, you got to start figuring things out. Right. Like pressure's on, you got to start figuring things out. And people always ask, like, oh, what do you want to do when you grow up? And, like, I didn't really know. But, like, you start to, like, name off things that sound cool. Like, oh, architecture is cool. Or, like, oh, orthodontists make quite a bit of money. That'd be cool. But I never actually really, like, had anything that I was like, yes, that's what I want to do. So I didn't end up going to college. Okay. There wasn't really, like, a reason that I didn't go. Although, like, I don't really agree with how college works nowadays. Right, I most, understand. For the most part. Um, and my brother went. Chase went for, like, a little over two years. He went for business at OSU Newark, the branch. And he didn't learn anything. And being in, like, he was going to, like, basically learn what my parents were doing. Like, business, marketing, that stuff. And having my parents that are currently working in it and then Chase going to school for it, the things that Chase was learning were, like, years behind what's actually going on. So hearing that from him and seeing him, he dropped out because it was just not useful to him. So I didn't go to school. So I started working for my parents a little bit. Not bad, not super awesome. I came to realize that, like, that's not really what I want to do. I still work for them a little bit. Chase, we can talk to talk about it a little more. Chase handles a lot of my workload so we can share. Okay. Like, I forgot to tell everyone, YouTube too. I do YouTube. Yeah, got a small channel, ten thousand subscribers. We actually just hit that last night, Back so that was pretty cool. Thank you. So we kind of like share workload a little bit with them, but I came to realize that that is not what I want to do forever. And my parents know that, and they're fully supportive of it. It doesn't really bum them out at all. They see my passion in other areas, so they're totally fine with it. And yeah, that's what got me into. Like photo and video, one thing leads to another. We kept, we live a very active lifestyle. Actually, what got me into mountain biking, I guess that would be the start of where my photo and video like aspect comes into play. Junior, senior year, we got into CrossFit really big. Okay. So we started doing that. We were out, Chase was out of high school. I was basically out of all my school sports. So I had to find something that I wanted to do. And CrossFit was something that, we found as a family, Chase actually like found it first and then I got introduced to it and then our whole family got introduced into it. So we started doing that pretty seriously for like three, four years, I'd say, three to four years. And being in like the tech space, my parents were in that space, that's what we were surrounded by. Uh, Chase and I started a print-on-demand business like a while ago for like the fitness industry, just like a little brand that we were just having fun with messing around with like Shopify print on demand mm. stuff. And I needed a way to promote it. So that's when I bought my first camera. I think it was like a rebel Canon rebel, like T six or something like that. Just like very cheap, like bare bones camera. Like I didn't know anything. It's kind of like the, the Holy grail for like the beginner cameras. Yeah. And that's what I was. I didn't know anything about cameras. I was like, damn, all that stuff's so expensive. Like, I don't want to buy that. So, right. and I mean, even the Rebel at the time, to me, like a junior in high school, 17 year old, maybe 16 at the time, I was like, man, this is like all my money. <laughs> right. So, like, I bought the camera and used it for like product photos. Didn't use it a lot. Like, I didn't know what I was doing, but I knew I needed something to take photos to promote this like little for fun business that we had. So, that's what I started using. And then that spiraled into mountain bikes because we started to kind of die out of crossfit like we started getting little injuries not i wouldn't say that they're caused by crossfit but just like doing active stuff over the years like you get some like little weird things and we started to get burnt out with it and we met our buddy caleb do you know caleb walker i don't know if you've i, I you've think i've seen yeah, him. probably seen, seen him on he's like been some in of some videos. of our videos yeah. for sure um we met him and he was our age he's from johnstown and we had never met anyone that had mountain biked. So growing up, my dad tried to expose us to like every sport that he could. And one of those was mountain biking. We'd go to the local like XC trails, Dillon State Park, mm -hmm. like maybe two or three times a year, just a little bit. So we were never like really into it. We didn't have nice bikes. It was just another thing for us to do during the summer when we got bored. 
And then we met our buddy Caleb through CrossFit. We started going to a gym in Johnstown because our cousin was going to that gym at the time. So we went with her and met him. He was actually a coach at the gym. And we became friends with him and found out that he was kind of in the same boat. His uh, stepdad would take him mountain biking too. They were a little more into it than we were at the time, but he would go occasionally as well. So that led Chase and I to get like better bikes. They weren't good by any means, but they were better. They were an mm-hmm. upgrade. So we all started riding together. And then we started hanging out a lot more. We were really good friends. Started going to places like Snowshoe out in West Virginia for the people that don't know where that's at. Um, and we were just hanging out, having a good time, started to uh, get away from CrossFit, more into mountain bikes. Now it's zero CrossFit, a lot of mountain bikes, and we were just having a bunch of good times. And I don't know about you, but I don't watch any TV. I watch all YouTube. That's like when I consume any type of video, it's normally YouTube Mm -hmm. because I appreciate like the real aspect of it. Like the people making the videos are real. Nothing is scripted. I mean, some people script their stuff, but like for the majority, it's, like, it's more authentic though than like some you know network television. Or it's whatever. like you're actually like there with them. Like you see their real personality, and I really like that kind of stuff. And there's just a lot more variety on YouTube. So we're having fun. We're doing a lot of like cool things, and I mean downhill mountain biking. A lot of people think is crazy. So we just kind of decided, or like I guess I kind of decided that I wanted to start like filming it. Like I knew YouTube like second biggest search engine in the world like people get paid for it and you get views and you can consistently get views over the time because youtube is one of the only platforms now that still pushes your content through search like instagram and facebook after you post it a day later that thing's gone forever like no one's ever going to see it so i knew what the potential was with youtube so i just started making videos and with my parents help and them teaching us about like SEO and stuff and how Google actually works and how videos are found. We were able to grow our channel pretty quickly compared to most people. We hit like a thousand subscribers and were monetized in like two to three months, which for most people takes like two years. Right. So we were able to find some like fairly decent success early on with that. And then uh, with that came us making videos for ourselves weekly. We tried to make weekly videos, so I was handling the camera a lot more. And then, I mean, that just kind of, that all spirals into where I'm at now. Just like you're, you start filming more and more, and then it just like one thing leads to another, and you start getting to where I'm at, I guess. Yeah, and like, and so I was like, as you, you know, started, you know, making videos for yourself, did you, Obviously, you. I would assume that you enjoyed it, but like, what was that like? You know, as you started to like figure things out and and get better with it, because I feel like you know, like you're looking at the content now, you know, it's all, you know, it's it's like good stuff. So it's like it's 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 awesome being able to see the progression, right? And and for me, when I started filming, I just I enjoyed literally enjoyed doing it, and it was very fun. And like I always just you know, was looking out to try to, you know, what can I do different or how can I make this look better? So like, what was that like for you, you know, as you guys are, you know, starting to create content for yourself and, and, you know, what was that growth like for you? Uh, I mean, I just really enjoyed the learning process. Like I've always, like, I've always appreciated quality content. So like, just like the research with everything, like learning how the camera works, learning what affects what, and then like, I started with the Rebel, and then, like, you start upgrading cameras pretty quick. As like you, you start, do with bikes. <laughs> yes, exactly the same. So, like, I had a lot of fun just, like, learning how to use the cameras and learning, like, what makes videos better or, like, what makes them more engaging on YouTube and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's been, like, two, I guess it's probably been more like three or four since I, like, first started, like, picking up a camera. And, I mean, I've just enjoyed, like, learning how to make videos better better and like how to make workflow better and stuff like that yeah like i I feel like definitely like when i first saw some of your videos i I think they were like they were literally like uh you guys had just started like riding at horns a lot and you guys had like i think you had put like one of the first videos that you had put out was you know like all the trails at horns yeah yeah, yeah. and like i remember during that time when i came across your content was we were literally we had just started riding and you know we've done like the alum creek and a little chestnut like little local trail systems and we're literally okay well these are all cool and fun so like what else is out there so literally in the search of like trying to find trails like in the neighboring area came across horns hill newark and like oh wow this is sick and and like for for us too, like 
learning how to ride and like being very early on, like being exposed to it's a big, like the type of riding over there is a big difference from like a lot of like the local trolls here. Um, so we're like, oh, this is cool. Let's go check it out. And literally went out there. We went out there a couple times and like had a blast. But like literally, that's how I came across your content. Seeing that, you know, and then kind of seeing how you guys have being involved with with all of that at, at horns not only with the content that you guys were creating for yourself but um you know something else that like really stood out is that you guys were like building this community of like cyclists mountain bikers that it's has literally like in the past year has like ballooned into like a very very big like community and for me one of the cool things was that that i really enjoy about that is that it's all like very welcoming and like i know when we first went out there like riding and stuff it was like super intimidating and like i know we're kind of it i derailing a little bit but like i feel like one of the, the the cool things about the content that you guys do and like even the the community that you guys have built out there is the fact that it's like very welcoming for like everybody of like all skill levels like yes there's like you know, um, there's features and things that are like very difficult and are like for like super experienced mm -hmm. riders, but it's not only like how the trails are built, but like even just the, the people that are there are very welcoming to people who are like wanting to learn and, and are very welcoming to like, you know, for me, like when we first went there, we were like, Oh, we don't, we can't do any of this shit. This yeah. is, but it was very welcoming and made us go back. And like, now we, you know, whenever we get a chance, we're always going to ride. It's funny. Cause like, I'll ask my son, where do you want to go ride and like okay it's like okay do we have we have so much time so like we can ride you know 30 minutes go to like one of these places and just get like a quick run or whatever or drive an hour drive an hour to go horns and like we'll spend you know the day there or whatever yeah. um so you know a lot of times he's like well let's just go over there like you know even if don't get to ride that much i'd rather just go ride there a couple times and not only for me and like but like for him as well seeing how we've been able to like get better and like progress as like writers has, has been, you know, very monumental. And like, it's cool how, yeah, how everything's like been able to, how everything's been set up over there for like people, like even more so now, I feel like it's, it's even more welcoming for beginners that it's, it, it kind of gives you not only the people, but like even just the ability to like ride there, it makes it easy for anybody to like really go out there and enjoy it. Yeah. And you'll probably never find a, another place with the community like that. I mean, we've traveled a lot of places on the East coast and there's just the community at horns. is just, it's weird because everyone is just there having a good time. Egos are left at the gate for, I mean, just most for the most part. I mean, yeah. there's always some exceptions, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've never been to a place that's just like so much like fun as a community. Like, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of trails out there that are way more fun than horns, but as a community and just like a place to chill, like it's, it's a pretty cool place. Yeah. I think that's like one of the, like the things that like, I feel like that you guys have been very instrumental in like building that it's, it's, I, it's, it's very, very good to know, like there's places like that. And, and even, you know, like with the Facebook group and every, everything on social media, like it's, everybody is like, Hey, you know, yeah, that Facebook group growth was crazy. We started that group just for like the core, like probably 10 to 15 people that were like the locals that just like knew about it. And just like we were all riding together. We kind of just used it as a group to just like get in touch with each other. Hmm. And then we made, I forget what video it was. It was one of our first Horns Hill videos. And we made it specifically to try to like get traction for it because we knew that if we could like get some traction, the city would be on board with like funding it a little bit or just letting us build there again. And we made that video and linked the Facebook group and it shot up to like a thousand members like that. It was crazy. And then ever since then, it's just spiraled into where it's at now and where it keeps going. Yeah, it's awesome because like you know you you'll see random people come in like oh yeah we're coming from like Tennessee or from oh, Pennsylvania yeah. every or, state you know. like every weekend it's crazy so it's awesome that like it's kind of become you know a place for people to you know yeah to connect and to you know communicate and you know mm -hmm. even just get help so like even kind of going back to you know you mentioned you know you know you put together this video to try to get you know the city to, like let you guys build there and stuff what was that like because from my from like what I know of of what what that was there like yeah those trolls have been there for for years but they were not up to like the the standard that they are now and they weren't you know as robust and and all of that so like what drove you guys to kind of start wanting to like build that out to what it is now and and what's um 
Like, yeah, how, how did how did that come about? We just, I mean, we wanted a better place to ride because normally, like, I mean, we still do. We got If you're in Ohio and you like downhill mountain biking, you're not going to get it. So you're going to have to drive to, like, the closest place now, which is Snowshoe, which is, like, five, six hours away. So we wanted a place to be able to ride while we're at home that could just, like, keep us uh, satisfied a little bit. And Horns was the only, like, option we really had. And there was already stuff there from, like, 10-plus years ago that definitely needed some love. So us locals just kind of went out there on our own dime and just, like, started, like, fixing it up a little bit and just making it rideable. And then that's that was kind of in the, like, time span when we started, like, doing YouTube, like, vlogs and videos and stuff like that. So we started doing videos on that, and then people, and we made the videos geared towards, like, mountain biking in Ohio. So people mm-hmm. like you, like, searching for other places to ride would find it. And it worked, and, like, we started getting more and more people out on the weekends, and all we had were these old trails that needed a lot of work. So then, I mean, one thing leads to another, and we ended up getting some funding, and then Dave Huff is another guy that was local to here. He, like, grew up in the area i think like i think he's more southern ohio though but he originally helped build them so we ended up securing some funds having him back out and then that's what kicked off like the new stuff that's been built so it's been pretty cool to see it kind of come alive again yeah and like in and even like more recently like it's like now you guys have a lot of support from like you know the like the city and and how what, what has that been like being able to, you know, see that growth and like how much of that was like intentional, obviously, because it, I, you know, from what I understand, it's not very cheap to, to do a lot of that. Yeah. And like, I know a lot of work goes into maintaining the trails and, and even just like building out, you know, like I know there's, you know, the people are, you know, you guys are actively building no, new trails and like trying to spice things up there. Um, what has that, like, what was that like for you guys, you know, like working with the city? Well, now being being able to get that recognition right from like the city because you know these are trails that were I don't want to say that they were abandoned but they weren't you know like maintained as yeah. they are now right. Um, it kind of all started with uh, Bob. Bob Bavard is one of the original guys that got them like to start being built, and he had all the contacts at the city. He knew everyone, and Horns Hill is kind of an anomaly where the city is very hands off. They like us being there. They like the we're bringing people into the city, but they don't want to have to deal with any of it. So okay. they kind of just said, you guys have the green light to basically do whatever you want there, uh, but we don't want to like have to deal with it. So you guys have permission to do it, and that's about it. And they like funding was, for the most part, up to us. So if we could get the money, we could do it. And that's very rare. Most of the time in most cities, the city, like... It's a lot of red tape, right? One person gets hurt and they're like, nope, shut down. Whereas Newark, we're very lucky to the point where, like, they understand the risk that comes with that sport. And they're not just going to shut it down because one person gets hurt, one person does something stupid. They're not just going to ruin it for everyone. So that's been really cool to see, like, their support with everything. Did, did, was there any like do you know if there were any challenges with you know like building the trails to where uh i don't know like i've always, i've been interested because like i always watch you know we see videos of like trail building and stuff and like it's obviously you know it's not just you know a couple guys with shovels yeah. that are building these sounds these are like properly made trails that mm-hmm. you know what how, how much involvement do they even have with that or the city yeah uh none really we build basically what we want and then there's been days where they've had like the city officials out there and like their like insurance company or whatever just to like look at it and make sure it's all okay and like they go around on a like side-by-side tour and look at everything and they're like yeah looks fine even like all the stuff on slim like those crazy drops and the big jumps they're like yeah, we don't see a problem with it. Like you guys are fine, so we're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, that that's awesome. And like it, and like uh, it's it's crazy. You know, kind of going back to what you were saying that you know when kind of what all ballooned all of that is you know like you created this content of like you know to try to you know literally yeah. target people to like come out and, yeah, and check it out. Goal. You know, so it, it's 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 cool being able to see that. But yes, that worked, and just even seeing that grow because like I know you know when we went there for the first time to today. It's it's almost like 
it's a completely i feel like it's a completely different like trail system because i don't even want it's not even like a trail system. it's more like a bike park literally yeah it, 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 it really it is. really is it's very small but it i mean it runs a shuttle on the weekend and i mean you could classify it as a bike park so and it's pretty cool like something that I, I i've i've always been curious too like you know you guys you know with now with a lot of the contents you guys do you you know have this freedom to you know you travel all over the country you know you you, you guys race mm -hmm. and you know you get to see all these different you know bike parks and trail systems that are like all over the country like i've always been curious how does that even compare like what we have here like how does that even compare like obviously the community and and like the riding might be a little bit different but like how how do you compare that with you know things that you've seen like out there in the, in the rest of the country the other bike parks are legit like there's such longer runs the steepness of the terrain like the thing about horns hill is like the people that it brings in are ohio and the surrounding states which are not very mountainous at all so like the people that come to horns hill think like oh this is gnarly like this isn't like crazy hard but for someone like me that's used to riding like windrock for example like horns hill i feel like I, like now at this point you could ride like blindfolded like wow. it's like you're just chill having fun whereas like most people that come there are like they got to be at the top of their game to even make it down the like 250 foot of vertical drop yeah whereas like We'll do runs at Windrock that are like 3,000 feet of vertical drop, and you have to go as fast as you can down it. So it's like, it doesn't really compare. Horns is still really fun. The new trail gauntlet is like, it's a proper trail for Ohio, and even for places outside of Ohio, it's like a, it's a good challenge for a lot of people. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely nice to have while we're here, but it doesn't really compare to the stuff out like I haven't been out west to mountain bike, but just the parks that I've been to in the east, it doesn't really compare. Yeah, and what's interesting too is like even compared to, I guess what, yeah, I mean as far as like difficult like mountain bike trails, there's really not a whole lot like here besides Horn. So I guess like you said, if if that's all, you know, if that's like all you've really been exposed to, like it would be very difficult. But it's. Yeah, it, we went to Tennessee. We went to Tennessee last year, and it was uh, like in Knoxville. We we were Bakers. Rode, yeah, so we rode out there, and that was pretty cool. And like seeing that, having like already gotten a little taste of like horns, like oh wow, this is like like legit. And it's for me, you see, I don't know. I've been being introduced to, like the whole like cycling world. It's for me, I was like amazing. Like oh wow, there's like literally like a whole city that like they've like integrated this as like yeah. part of like the you know, normal park system, you know? And mm -hmm. so it's, it's pretty cool seeing how there's, you know, things like that are, are being fleshed out and built. And like, even like, I feel like here in Ohio, like it's kind of ballooned because even from that, um, you know, like even some like the XC trails here locally, we got, you know, we were literally like random riding one day and, you know, we got introduced to like a, uh, like a Nike league. I don't know if you, ever, I don't know if you did any of that. When, I when did you were it, in high but I I'm familiar with it. So like my son got introduced to that. So like last year we spent literally all summer going all over Ohio doing races and stuff. And, and from there, you know, was able to get better at riding and literally riding a whole lot more. And, and even like with the progression from just riding so much that, you know, now you know we go to horns and it's like a whole lot easier we can ride most of the trails yeah. and it's it, i don't know for me it's, it's fun like i enjoy it so like even kind of like tying in like not only having fun like mountain biking but you know now you guys are creating this content right so you started you know making videos kind of trying to get people to come out to horns and with that you've kind of been able to you know build like your own, you know build flesh out your youtube channel like yeah. your social media um what was that like like what what was that transition like from where you guys were you're creating content for you know for like you guys for you and your brother horns or whatever and then like now you know you're working with like other mountain bikers other riders other people like in action sports and like talk a little bit about that it's funny because i didn't really realize it until right now the like transition point was two years ago we were at snowshoe for the i think it was the snowshoe enduro Maybe. Yeah, it was a snowshoe enduro. Um, during practice, I crashed and had a grade five AC separation. So before that, I had like, I don't think I had ever done any work for anyone else other than like creating YouTube stuff for ourselves and like photos for ourselves. And I didn't really, I didn't, I don't think I really had any interest in working for other people at that time. 
And so I got hurt and all of our buddies were still there too. So like we were staying throughout the weekend regardless. And at that point, I didn't even know the extent of my injury. I just know that I couldn't race the next day. So I had my camera there and I knew I could probably make a little bit of money taking photos of the race. So I went out the next day with my camera since I couldn't race and I took photos of the race and it ended up being probably about as good of conditions as you could get as a photographer. It was like we were up at Snowshoe really thick like fog in the morning I don't you've probably seen some of the pictures around but like it was like the perfect scene to take really cool photos so I was just out there all day taking cool photos of the race and then I had them for sale for people to buy I actually think that that first round I did I gave them away for free but I put my Venmo on there and said if you want to like pay me for it go for it because like I didn't want to make people Right. I yeah. wasn't really trying to make money with it at the time. Like you I were said, just trying I, to make use of your time. Right? Exactly. You like I said, I wasn't really interested in doing work for other people. I just wanted something to do. So I was like, and I had never had the opportunity to just like sit down and shoot an event like that. So that's what I did. And I ended up having several people that like sent money and then quite a few that didn't. Well, I mean, that's what, that's how it works. And then the next weekend right after that was the, like one of the national downhill races that we were planning on doing too. And Chase did that one as well. And I still couldn't hold onto a bike at the time. So I was like, all right, well, and that was at snowshoe as well. So I, I came back for that like the next week and did the same thing. And there's a website called roots and rain, which is made for mountain bike photographers to take photos of an event. And then you can tag riders and it'll notify them that there's new photos from that race. It's, okay. it's a really cool website. The guy that like made it is a genius. Like it's, it's cool. So I came out to the national event and did it again. And people started to notice really quick that my photos stood out for most people because this was probably a couple of years into me, like handling cameras. And I started to actually learn how they yeah, work. You had a lot of experience already. I was starting to get more experience. I knew how they worked. And then I, also knew a little bit more about like composition than most people like getting like depth in the photos and like making the rider stand out a little bit so people started to notice my photos and then I started making content for Tommy Zula that's who like really like came to me first the like most significant person he's a former Red Bull pump track world champion in I think it was 2019 it was the year right before COVID because then they had like a gap year so And that would be my advice to someone is like, if you're trying to work with other people or like get your work noticed is like make content for yourself, but also throw yourself into like, like for me, it's action sports. So like mountain biking, for example, like I was making content of myself and sooner or later people are going to start seeing it and they're, they're, you might not know it, but they're going to start recognizing who you are. And then if you keep making content for yourself, they're eventually, if it's good, they're eventually going to come to you to like do stuff. And that's how I like to roll. I don't, I don't like chasing people for money or jobs. I like to do good enough work to where they, they'll come to me and like, they'll want me to work with them. So yeah, I guess that's, that's been, uh, how it got into it. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Like even, you know, you were literally able to make, you were just like making best of the situation. Like, oh, yeah. so I can't ride. So you know, busting out the camera and, you know, here you are now. Cause I feel like, yeah, a lot of the stuff that you've done recently has been like very, you know, very good work. And it's, uh, for me, like I, I know how difficult it is to even just, you know, like take fo- do photography and like yeah. do video. Um, and, and even now, like being exposed to like the whole action sports world and mountain biking i'm like oh wow like this is like a lot of the guys that like do this stuff like they're you know it's it's very good work and like it's 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 awesome because i like, compared to like i don't know it's like compared to other sports i i feel like mountain biking snowboarding or like you know different uh, just action sports in general that um creating for those are, are very it's, it's i think it'll just as challenging as like doing the sports themselves because it's you know, you don't really get a whole lot of chances to like repeat things. And yeah, that's the hard part. It's like when I work with Tommy, I mean, we just got back from that trip that I'm sure you saw that I was on. And like, that was three or four days of sun up to sundown shooting. And like, especially the riders like that tires them out quick. So like, and it helps too that you need to, if you're like filming action sports, 
I think it's very important that you need to be doing them as well so that you understand what the riders are going through and what kind of shots they're looking for. Because that's the hardest thing that I've heard from other people that have worked with, like these riders ride for brands, obviously they got sponsors and a lot of times those sponsors will send out a photographer, a videographer and say, hey, this guy's going to do a video for you. Well, this guy doesn't actually do the sport. So yeah. it's just like clashing mindsets that like the rider knows what looks cool and looks good but someone that's not really in that industry or in that sport but he knows how to work a camera great it just like it doesn't mesh well so if you're like trying to get into the action sports i i think it's very important that you're doing them yourself yeah like i mean that's literally one of the things that i've, I've come to learn like myself because now you know as initially i you know i'm just riding for fun you mm -hmm. know it's for me, it was kind of like an outlet to get away from like the creative world and stuff. But now that like I'm doing this and I see a lot of, you know, cool content that, that can be created and, and even just being able to document like those experiences, um, you know, like literally like towards the end of like this writing season, like I kind of started taking out my camera more and, and, and writing with that, you know, with that mindset of like trying to capture and like, yeah, it's, it's not as, uh, yeah, you you definitely need to kind of have an idea of like how the sport works and 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 I, I feel like even when you know you're creating these films like yeah it gives you a better understanding of you know where you think you'd be able to get a good shot or you know uh you know even just like familiarizing yourself with the trails because like a lot of times right like you're you're riding them as well yeah you know with the fucking heavy ass camera bag yeah you gotta have a nice <laughs> camera bag with some tight like hip straps and chest straps so that, that thing's not bouncing around everywhere so it's, it's 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 pretty cool. Like I have a lot, I have a lot of respect for a, a lot of the guys that that are in the action sports scene and like mountain biking and like in any of the action sports. Like there, I have a lot of respect for um, for people who are able to create these awesome you know, films yeah. because it's yeah you you have to like not only battle the exposure and like actually you know ride and like be in be be in it, but also just being able to create create you know yeah. al alongside of that right so it's 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 um it is very cool and like with you know you talked about you know being able to create content for yourself how has that you know I've, you kind of alluded to it where it's been like instrumental to the the growth that you're making now as you know like freelancer for hire or whatever yeah. but how has that been able to um with the content that you're creating, what are, I feel like there's, I don't know, there's so much that I want to talk about. Like, you know, you guys are, are growing this YouTube channel and, you know, not only YouTube, but like just on social media in general, that it's, you know, you're starting to kind of get, you know, monetize in a sense where you're getting, you know, brand deals or, or getting, you know, these yeah. sponsorship opportunities. What has that, what, how has that, uh, been for you like i know there's been been a few different guests that um that we've had on the podcast i've talked a little bit about how you know what are some of the things that they've experienced with you know working with brands or creating content for brands whether it be in exchange for you know for content or getting paid or, or you know whatever whatever it is what has that experience been like for for you and what are some of the things that you're kind of learning or, or have learned working with brands yeah working with brands and, and creating content for them so the only like actual brand that I've made content for a lot of stuff is like just like like Tommy for example he started out as just like needing photos or videos just for himself like he would fork out the money himself for it it was just stuff for himself and then my first actual legit brand deal I would say was like a month ago when we were in San Diego for Tommy's main sponsor Airborne Bicycles that video was for them and there's definitely a change of like, it changes things when it's for a brand. I, I'm sure you know that too. Yeah. Like, um, that was a stressful week. It's, uh, I'm sure you've had clients that you like kind of don't see eye to eye with all the time, but like you, you just, you make it work, you get through it. And, uh, I finished the video like last night, I think, and I'm pretty satisfied with it. A like, few changes to be made, but it was a long, long, like three, four days of like you're up before the sun and you're out late, like just cause you got to get that golden hour light. So like you got to get there early, but brands also have the budget. So like you get paid more to work with brands, but there's definitely a lot more expectation that comes with it. 
more revisions of everything. I'm sure you know that too. <laughs> yeah, I feel like so. Yeah, because I, I, you know, kind of what I'm getting is like, yeah, you don't really have as much. Uh, I mean, obviously, there you have some creative input, but you you are you don't have as much freedom, I guess, yeah. as you would as you're creating your mm-hmm. your own content, right? And like even with um, you know with that, like the stuff that you create for yourself, what. How, how does how does that how does that compare like you know what what's your approach to that like whether you know if you're working with a brand let's say you know like now you're you know let's say you get a partnership with a you know for for your youtube channel not necessarily okay. working for like a brand what is, what is that like or have you had anything like that uh you mean like our like thing with kenda yeah well i, I guess I, I guess that's a, a, a example of that like I know, I know i've seen some like videos where you know and like maybe i could be wrong if if, if those are just kind of like videos of you guys literally just talking about the products and and like know, our just, previous videos like with michelin yeah yeah i i've seen like because yeah i've seen some content like that where you know you guys are talking about like you know whether it's like doing reviews or products and stuff because you know like there's you know there's a whole world of you know like like in the photography videography world like filmmaking world there's you know people do tech reviews and things like that and like obviously you see that with mountain biking Mm -hmm. as well um have you like have you had like any sponsorships or brand deals like Mm -hmm. in that regard or a lot of the content you guys create are just reviews that you guys buy the thing and you guys are just talking about it it's a little bit of both so the michelin thing actually started because it started with chase he Mountain bike tires, we needed new tires. We're a big fan of trying different things. It's not like the mainstream, like, oh, this is the best one just because it's the best, because we say it is, which would be Maxxis. Um, Everyone knows Maxxis, but Chase wanted to try something new, so he tried Michelin tires. He ended up liking them, so I ended up trying them too. We both liked them, and then we made some videos reviewing them. And for anyone that has done YouTube, would probably know that review videos do very well. For some reason... YouTube always likes to push review videos and it's something that people search for yeah. for year after year so your stuff will get shown. So we made a handful of Michelin reviews and then Michelin reached out to us and they wanted to give us product flow, which is just free tires with no money involved, just like no nothing, no obligation or anything. It was just they appreciated that instead of just asking for tires for just because we needed tires, we actually bought them, used them, and then like gave an honest review on YouTube. So they liked that, and then they were willing to give us free tires for the season. And then we kept on doing our normal thing, like making our normal vlogs and reviews and whatnot. And then at the World Cup last year, we ended up meeting or running into one of the guys that was working in the Kenda tent in the pits. And he was just like, oh, why aren't you guys running Kenda tires? And we're like, well, um, we've never met anyone from Kenda. We're, we're, I mean, we're open to it. Let's make it happen. And then that's when the Kenda sponsorship oh, wow. happened. So it was it was weird. He had watched our videos. He knew who we were. Kenda is a local company to Ohio. So yeah. everyone that works there knows what Horns Hill is, and they probably ride there too. So that just kind of like happened. Like it was, it's weird. Like it wasn't like either of us trying to make it happen. We just like ran into each other. And then like I've been saying, one thing leads to another and like things just start to happen. And what, and as with the YouTube channel, like how has that, you know, you guys have seen a lot of growth and a lot of it is, you know, not only to the credit to the good content that you put out, but also, you know, like you mentioned that, you know, with your family business, you're kind of exposed to mm-hmm. SEO and, and being able to trigger the algor- algorithm the yeah. right way. Um, how much of that, how much work do you do you guys put into now, like as far as like, you know, how you create the content and, you know, obviously thumbnails, titles, all of that, all, all, of, all of those yeah. different variables that, that dictate what makes a video viral or, or have success or get seen by the people that, that you wanted to get seen. How much of, how much work, you know, do you put into that, um, on top of, you know, obviously creating it, right? Yeah, so like I mentioned earlier, my older brother Chase is like the other half of everything. So family business, Chase kind of takes all the food off of my plate in that so that we can grow the YouTube as well. So I basically handle everything on the YouTube and he handles a lot of my work with the uh, my parents, my family, our family business. So, I mean, it's like, it's a full-time job. Like even one video a week, like you have to find 
the time we try to do one video a week but we're in winter season now so like it's hard to make a video so like we didn't have one this past week because it's just it's hard to come up with a video in this time of season but like in the summer let's say in the heat of the season even one video a week is like all right you're gonna you got to travel somewhere to make this video so you're spending a day traveling a day at least one day shooting and then you got to travel back to home and then I mean, most stuff I can knock out in a day, so a day to edit. And then I'll also make, like, some social cuts and whatnot, so we'll say that's the next day. So, I mean, there's five days right there just for one video. So, I mean, it adds up quick. It's a full-time job, and it's just, like, nonstop. Like, every weekend we got to go do something. Most of the time it's just, like, we're already doing something, so we just kind of document it on the way. We rarely have to just, like say like oh hey man like we don't have a video for this week we we need to go do something most of the time during the season it's just like documenting what we're already doing which is what we like to do so yeah i mean it's a full-time job yeah it's it yeah i mean it's not easy i mean even with like this podcast here it's not it's i find it challenging where like it's literally just us talking yeah and it's it's you know, it's work. You got to put in, you got to set up the cameras, you got to make time to edit, you got to cut everything up and do all of that, you know, on top of, you know, the day, regular day to day jobs, um, you know, you throw in kids and all of that and just yeah. add, makes it, there's, there's a lot of time management involved. Um, so uh, pretty, pretty much at this point is basically like that's you, you spend most of the time wor- working on the YouTube stuff. Yeah. It's like, it's, basically my full time job and I don't make a lot of money doing it yet. <laughs> that's what a lot of people don't understand like a lot of people that look at my instagram or my youtube are like man and i had someone talk to me about it last night like dming me like oh you guys are living the life and i'm like we're trying like we're not really yet like if you actually knew you wouldn't think so like there's a lot of times where i'd be like yeah i'd love to have that nine to five job security but like most of the time i wouldn't trade my little bit of income that i have now for the lifestyle that i get to live and the traveling and the that I get to do and the people that I get to be around. So like, there's just, there's two sides to it. Like it's, it's awesome. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, sometimes it would be nice to just wake up and go do what you go do and make the money that you make. Yeah. But like, and, and it, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting because I feel like a lot of people, like, yeah, I mean, everybody, you would, you would think, right. That, yeah, you know, you got to figure it out. You're, you know, but I don't at all. <laughs> like I'm just, I literally go day by day and, just things happen. Like, yeah, that, that, that's kind of what I was trying to say. Like, it's it's interesting, like how yeah, a lot of people, you know, from looking from the outside, they would think that oh, you know, they see you know a lot of polished work and a lot of you know, uh, you know, literally what a lot of times what people put on online, a lot of it like this, the highlight reels, right? Yeah. And you know, you see things that are like super polished, and you think that you know, people would think that it's yeah, oh, you guys got this figured out and, and all of that, and, and a lot of times. <laughs> Behind the scenes, people, you know, like, yeah, I'm still trying to figure this out. Yeah, know? every so, day I'm trying to figure it out. I feel like, though, even with that with that being said, like, I think it's it's awesome that you're still able to create the quality content that that you are creating because I feel like that it, that it does make you stand out and, like, it's only a matter of time, especially with the growth. Obviously, you've seen it with the growth yeah. that you've had that it's only a matter of time before it gets to the point where, yeah, you could definitely, you know, make a living off it and you don't have to worry about you know, getting a nine to five job or, yeah. or, or trying to make money in, in, in other ways. But like, I think kind of going back to like how you guys been able to, you know, to like just grow the YouTube it's yeah. I mean, I, I understand like how that is a lot of, it's very difficult and it's not easy as, you know, like, okay, well I'm just going to go shoot and, and put something out. So it, it's pretty cool seeing that, like I, I wasn't sure if you guys, uh, how much planning you you put into like creating like the videos. Obviously, I mean there, I think there there's some, I would guess from some of the stuff that I've seen that you know you kind of put some, some put some thought into like oh you know we're gonna make a video about this, but most of the time like you said it's mostly just documenting what you know yeah. your day to day. Do you ever see like? yourself kind of transitioning from that or is that something you kind of want to continue doing from like youtube stuff well i I guess like in youtube stuff or just creating in general like what what do you see yourself like in the future like what do you see yourself doing because i don't even even recently you kind of you know not just mountain biking you're kind of doing different things yeah so i just i was at king of the hammers with kyle cheney he's a he's can-am's professional utv driver 
he's a local here. I've been on his ass for like the past two years trying to get him to let me come be his like media guy for that event. And Chase and I went out there and we did that. So that was a whole new aspect to us. We're familiar with off-road stuff, but we'd never had the chance to go do something like that. But what a lot of people don't realize is that, like, I don't really want to have a media agency. Like every time, every event that I go to, it's like even mountain biking, like, yeah, I'm filming for this guy, but I want to be that guy. Or like I was there filming with Kyle, but like, I'd rather be the race car driver. Like, but you can't just do it. Like you got to figure out a way to do it. So in my head, like I, I enjoy making videos. Like I don't just do it because it pays some bills. Like I enjoy making the videos and I enjoy like all these action sports, but in reality, like I want to be at the forefront of that, like the guy actually doing that and then eventually have, like we're doing this YouTube on at the same time. Like eventually I'd want it to be like Chase and I being like this mountain biker or this race car driver while we have cameramen with us for our personal YouTube. Gotcha. So it's, it's a struggle because while I'm there, I want to be that guy, but I see it as the best way to get into things like that because you're meeting all these people, like all these people that like all sponsors and people that you need to know that eventually like you can make something happen with. And in this day and age when like reach and eyeballs are like a big thing to sponsors, like we're growing this YouTube at the same time, I'm using my like media credentials and like being at all these events, filming these people that are already professionals there. I'm meeting all these people and making all these connections that, lead to different things and in the future like could possibly lead to like us being at the forefront of it rather than behind the camera so that's the ultimate goal like i and that's why we don't have like a media agency for stuff is because we would ideally like to keep it freelance until we can make something happen ourselves so you could hire somebody to, to yeah. film for you guys yeah. yeah so we can be we can be the youtube channel and the entertainers or like the professionals while yeah, while someone follows us around and films it for us. I guess what's something that you would say to somebody that wants to get started in the action sports world? And like, I mean, you 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 had a good point. Like, yeah, you actually should probably like actually do the do the sport. Yeah, um, I, I know like that obviously would give you a lot of understanding. But like, what are some? What do you think for let's say for example like with mountain biking? Like, what are some key things to like consider when you know you're filming or putting a, a film together? Yeah, I would say like going back to that, like I, you got to put yourself in the community. Like, you could be the best filmer ever, but if you don't know anyone, it doesn't matter. Like, you got to make connections. And the best way to do that is by showing up to the trails and riding. And then, like I said, again, like making content for yourself at the same time. If you do it correctly, people in the community are going to see it. And they they might act like they don't know who you are in person, but they know who you are. Like we get recognized quite a bit when we go out. People will start to know who you are. And then, I mean, DMs go a long way. Like if you are if you think you're putting out good work and you see someone that could benefit from it, I mean, DM them. I, don't, I personally don't like chasing after people for money or jobs. I like doing good enough work and making myself known to the point where, like, when they need something, they think of me. Like, I yeah. can know mine. So, yeah, I guess the biggest thing would be, first of all, doing good work and then put yourself out in the community, actually do the sport, and then you'll start making connections with people. Like, you hang around a place long enough, you're going to start meeting people and then they've got friends that need something and then you come to mind like just i think connections are the biggest thing yeah it's i, I feel like i mean and that's been a common theme especially with like more recent episodes has been yeah it's literally about the relationships that you yeah. can make that you can foster in and out of you know like not only just filmmaking but just in general it's i mean it's so important right like it's literally a lot of it is literally who you know it is i would venture to say it's like a hundred percent like in the couple years that we've done it, anything that we've had to like sponsor wise or like any like brand deal stuff, anything that we've tried to reach out for to get hasn't worked. Like they'll either just straight up say, no, we're not interested or they just won't answer. But everything that has come like successfully to us has been from just like knowing people like word of mouth and stuff like that. So yeah, just getting out and making connections is huge. Yeah. That, that's awesome. And like, yeah, I, I think it's great. Like, I mean, I've I've always been curious too with you know to with 
with you, you know, you mentioned that, yeah, you would love to be like in front of the camera more than behind the camera. Yeah. So it's, it's cool seeing that. Cause I'm always curious, like, you know, it's, do you see yourself, you know, branching out into like doing your own thing or like having some kind of like, you know, action sports agency or whatever. So it was, it was, I, I was something I've always been curious about. So, you know, yeah, I don't, I just, I don't think having, I could see myself if I did have some sort of agency, I would want to do it at a time in a way that I could be hands off. Yeah. That I could hire people that I trust that could do basically what I'm doing for other people. And then I could go out and do my own thing still. Yeah. And like, I feel like you probably even get to that point, honestly, by continuing doing what you're doing. I know, because... Just not even like trying to do it, but it eventually, <laughs> like I already have people that are like trying to get into what I'm doing that reach out for advice. So, I mean, just people like that and who knows what it could turn into. Yeah. For me, it's, it's, it's something that I, I want to try and do more. Like I know, like I'm making more of, I'm, now with, once it starts getting warmer and like start riding a lot more, I want to go out and be with my camera and like do stuff. I know we've been talking about doing a mountain bike thing for like two years. Yeah. Like I, I like, and like, honestly, like I want to, and like at first I was so torn between like, yeah, I'm like literally just learning how to ride and like, I enjoy riding. And for me, it's so it's, it was a like an outlet from having the camera on me, you yeah. know, but the more I ride and like the more I see things, I'm like, shit, like I want to make something. Yeah. Um. So it's, it's, like now it's kind of gotten to the point like I have that itch and like I need to like scratch it and yeah. like I want to do something. Like I know like like right right before I think it was like the, literally like the probably like the first snowfall of the year I went out with my son and it was cold as shit. And we were we went to Horns and uh, you know I took the camera and I'm like man like this shit is not easy at all. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> ask. Uh, so how has your like vision for a mountain bike video changed from like when you first started to like now, like you've gotten like pretty into mountain bike and you understand like the community and how it works. Like if you were to make a video back when you first started and now, like, do they look like different videos? Oh yeah. They'd be totally different. Yeah. Like, honestly, like even now I feel like whenever we go to like a, like a new trail or something, I'm as I'm riding, I'm starting to say like, oh yeah, this would this would look this pretty would cool. cool shot. Yeah. And like, okay, oh, there's access right there. Like, oh, this would be pretty nice. And um what really helped me have more of an eye for that has been so like going to my son's races and taking literally going to take pictures and just trying like different positions and like areas and stuff. That's kind of like allowed me to be like have a kind of develop an eye for like, okay, yeah. like this will work. Or, you know, sometimes what what you know, when they do like the pre-rides, usually I'll go and ride with them and yeah, I'll be riding it. So, like, I when it comes to the race day, like, I know, okay, like, yeah, these, these are, the, like, the three spots. So, like, I can go here. Um, you know, at first, I literally just started taking pictures of him. But then, like, there were, you know, other kids on the team. So, like, I'm taking pictures of them. And, like, it's turned into, like, towards the end of the season, I'll, like, go to a race. And, like, I have a variety of, like, photos of, like, diff the different races yeah. from, like, different vantage points and stuff. So, it's, it's definitely allowed me to, like, actually riding and, like, getting more familiarized with the sport. It's you know, allowed me to have kind of develop that eye. And like, even now going back to like with, with what I, I know I'm capable of doing like video wise. Um, like now I'm starting to be a little bit more intentional. Like, okay, well now like I want to piece together like a film and yeah. like be able to tell a story, whether, you know, like a, you know, with a cool trail and whatnot. So when we went to the horns, like it was, the beginning of middle of November I, I'm I'm 100% sure it was like literally the first snowfall we had that year nice. and uh yeah it was pretty cool and it was fun but like I'm like oh I I this is the first time like I'm like doing something like that and and even just like the little bit of footage that we did get um because he ended up just be like yo it's too fucking cold like I'm yeah, tired of going it's down freezing it's like I'm tired of riding this <laughs> going going down this like yeah. section multiple times or whatever but um even that has been for me. I think it's it's cool that not only now I'm starting. To, I enjoy the sport, but now being able to like apply like my skill set and it's it's been like a refreshing in that sense that like now I can apply. I want to I want to apply and challenge myself with like a new skill. So like now going into like this new riding season and even um, now as it gets warmer, you know, with like my son doing races and stuff that I want to you know, create more content like in that, in that area. And literally just for fun, like, I feel like I don't really care if it leads to something, but more, I just want to be able to like to create cool, something cool. Yeah. One of the hardest things that I'd say about like filming action sports that the general public doesn't understand. And especially like 
the athlete that you're filming doesn't understand is like frame rate. Like I can't even tell you the amount of times like me and Tommy have been filming and like I filmed something in 24 to make it look quick and he's like, dude, that'd look sick slow-mo. And I'm like, well, <laughs> you got to go do it again, dude. Like it just, it doesn't work that way. You can't just choose after the fact, like if you want it slow-mo or not. So people don't understand that. Like if you got to, you have to have it like set out in your head of like how you want, like Aiden talked about it a lot. It's like planning it in your head of like what you want the end mm-hmm. result to look like. Like you can't just go f- just like, you can't just grab a camera and make something like it's, there's a lot more that goes into it than that. And that's what Chase struggles with working with me is like, he knows that I have everything in my head and I, he's coming a, a long way. Like he's learning a lot, but he's not, he's not to where I'm at yet. Like I'll have everything in my head and already know like what I want. And obviously he's not in my head. So he like, <laughs> it's like, I have to like verbally tell him like right. exactly what I'm thinking, like why I'm using this frame rate for this. And I mean, People just don't understand how much goes into it. Like, yeah, like even like in, and even with like the super polished films, you know, I know that those are not, and it's not done in one take. No, <laughs> you know, and like, yeah, because you have to, you have like your different, you know, different angles, and then obviously you have your different shooting at different frame rates and stuff. So, um, one thing like I, I definitely would would like to to be a part of is is what I would like to do is put some kind of like very polished you know film like that like I like something that's like really planned and laid out yeah yeah, like I see some of the stuff that you know that you know like a lot of the the different manufacturers and stuff put out and like even some like the bigger youtubers that are like yeah like these films these are like legit films that are telling a story and it's uh what's the what's the one dude that uh that rides for Common Saw. That does I was like, gonna say, Common Saw puts out some good shit. Like all of their shits, like very, very, very yeah. good. Um, so like I, I get a kick. Like I don't know about you, but so like now when I watch a lot of those videos, like yes, I love watching the video, but like I pay attention to a lot of like the beat behind the scenes, because like you know sometimes they'll put like a you know twenty minute cut and it's all just like BTS footage or whatever. yeah they put out a few like full like BTS videos of, and like, like I get a kick because I'm like paying it I'm like looking oh okay so that's how did I, that's I did that same thing I watched their BTSs of uh oh, what's his name I think it's JB Leotard he's their photographer. And they were showing, like, how he goes out there with, like, he uses a lot of flashes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he'll, like, start fires in the woods to, like, make smoke. And then he'll put a gel over the flash to make it look really red. And, like, just what goes into it is insane. Like, so, he'll spend a whole day, maybe two days, just to get one photo. And I'm like, wow. So, with that being said, what, like, are there, like, any anybody, like, in the action sports world, like, any photographers, videographers that you kind of, like, look up to or that are a fan of their work? In the mountain bike space, it'd be him. Because he's doing things that are so different. Like anyone, and I say that loosely, anyone can go out and just like photograph a mountain bike event or a rider. But he's taking flashes out there. He's creating, he's literally making fires out in the middle of the woods to create this like scene that he wants. He's just going so far above and beyond. And I just think all of his work is rad. But that also takes a lot of time and a budget from a brand like that to be able to go out and spend a whole weekend for one photo. Yeah. Like a lot of people can't do that unless they're doing it for free, which a lot of people have to start out that way. So yeah, I'd say if it was anyone, it'd be him in the mountain bike space. I don't really have anyone that comes to mind other than that. I mean, I watch a lot of Peter McKinnon. Like I'm sure you know, you know yeah. who that is. Man, that rain is loud. Uh, that's like a little soundtrack now. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna put everyone to sleep, but yeah, JB is he's a really cool photographer in the mountain bike world. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, some of the stuff, and like, like I have a lot of respect not only like for like the a lot of people behind the scenes doing the photography and videography, but also like even the riders themselves because like you're putting yourself like you're literally like having to ride these sections multiple times, you have to push the bike back up, you're riding it back down. A lot of times, you know, you're risking getting hurt. Yeah, and the riders are very picky about the shots, too. Oh, I bet. So, like, I mean, yeah, you could nail the shot every time, and you could be done in one, but the rider's not satisfied with themselves. So, like, I mean, Tommy is the perfect example of that, too. Like, he'll keep going until he's happy with himself. Like, not just until he's happy with me, but when he's happy with himself, too, and how he looked on film. So, like, there's shots that he'll do 10 times not because of me doing something wrong but it's because of himself wanting to like perfect himself so like 
it tires them out for sure. So, and then you got to balance, like I have to get the shot on the time that he does it perfectly. So you just kind of have to like come together and make it happen. Yeah. I, there's, yeah, I have a lot of respect for, for that. And like, it's, and what's cool to us, like you're like in these remote places and like, I don't know, I, I can't explain like the feeling that's something like if I, if I'm making a, I, what I want to do now with like, if I make a, whenever I do a mountain bike or, or cycling film, like I want to be able to articulate that feeling that I get from writing. And like, I don't know if it's the same for you, but like for me, I've never done any of this. Like literally, you know, like I've would ride, you know, local paved trail with like the kids when they're learning how to ride bikes and stuff. Um, but being exposed to that, like it's, you know, I, I grew up playing sports and, you know, like not only like the physical, like the mental aspect of like, oh, now you're riding this trail, you're going, you know, 15, 20 miles an hour. You have to not only like control your, keep yourself upright and you're going over all these obstacles and you are, you know, have all these things in your head and you have to like focus and, you know, maintain speed and do all of that. For me, it's, it's been like, I don't know, it's, I can't explain how I, how it makes me feel. And like yeah. at the end of the, at the end, you know, once you get to like the bottom of a trail, like the end of a trail, you're like, oh shit, like, yeah, I fucking did that. Yeah. So it's, it's, I don't know. I want to be able to like create something that can channel like what that feeling is like. I'd love to do that. I like, it's hard with our YouTube channel because it has to be mostly vlogs. We don't have the time or the manpower to like do these like long, like more in depth videos, like telling a story like that. And I think those are really cool. Like all the comments on videos all have like a little bit of a storyline to them. And I like that. And that's, that's what I wanted to make with Tommy out there. But he wanted just like straight up bike riding. So I got to cater to what the client wants. But I wanted to tell a story with it of like they do this thing every year where they they leave Ohio and they go somewhere warm and like travel specifically to ride bikes every winter. So I wanted to like kind of make that into a storyline. But yeah, I mean, it'd be super cool to do some sort of like longer format video like that way. Yeah, I think we'll well, I, I want to we definitely want to we should we'll we'll have to like link up and, and try to make something happen because like I feel like before like. I'm still not super confident in my writing, but like I know that like I've gotten a whole lot better yeah. and that like I have a lot more understanding of you know what to expect, you know, from from a mountain bike film and from, you know, like actually just writing and stuff. So it's it's been fun like it's it's crazy cuz like now whenever we're like planning family trips now and stuff, we're like, okay, well can we take our bike? Like we're going up to, you know, we go we're going up to Cleveland. Okay, can we make time to like go to Rays or you know, or, yeah. oh, we're going to Tennessee. Okay, well, let's take our bikes because there's trails. There'll be trails there, you know, somewhere like, um, you know, where they're planning like a trip to Colorado. And we're like, okay, well, if we're flying, like, can we take our bikes and yeah. like figure out like a bike goes everywhere with you. So like now, like literally like any family outing or anything like that, we're literally like planning, okay, can we take our bikes with us? Yeah. And like <laughs> it's, it's, it's uh, become obsessed and it's, it sucks because as uh like gear gear heavy i get with like filmmaking and stuff like cameras and lenses and shit i'm like i'm like now with like the bikes it's just as bad and like yeah. oh i already have like an addiction with like camera gear and like oh yeah <laughs> throwing I, bikes now i, I get it <laughs> you know it's uh so it, it's been cool and and like uh, and something that we didn't talk about too is like even with the racing like that's that's been interesting too. being exposed to that. Like it's totally different. The, the whole racing scene is totally different from like going to like a football game or like a basketball oh, game. Yeah. And, and that was like something like very like that stood out for me is just saying there's a lot of camaraderie and like, you know, obviously when you're racing, it's like most of the time you're literally at a, it's a battle against yourself, right? You're yeah. racing against the clock and you know, like your personal records and whatnot. But like, I don't know. I feel like just the, the cycling community in general, it's it's very welcoming and there's very there's a lot of camaraderie there. It is. It's very different from like everything else. Like even like snow sports, those people are ruthless out there. Like they're a lot of the times not super like friendly in the aspect of how the mountain bike community is. The mountain bike community, and I've been saying Chase and I have been saying it for like years. Like it's it's different from everything else. Like everyone most mostly is just there to like have a good time and ride their bike. It's not like everything else where there's like 
egos involved and stuff like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And like, and do you see, and like, even would you say like, even like within the different disciplines of like mountain biking, right? Cause you have like your there's, enduro racers and yeah, XC enduro, racers. downhill, yeah. XC, pump track, dirt jump, all that stuff. But like, I feel like just cycling in general, like people just like, I don't know, there's something about like being on a bike that just makes people like be cool. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it is either. I mean, it's just, it's fun, but I mean, at the same time, it's very dangerous. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And like, and, and that was another thing too. Like, I feel like, yes, it's very dangerous. And like, I mean, maybe there's something that you can talk about too, that I don't know. I feel when we first got introduced, I always, you know, obviously there's a lot of risk involved with, you know, action sports, mountain biking, whatever. Um, but I don't know, like, I feel like there's, there's a lot of importance too of like being like understanding like what your limits are and like being able oh, to yeah. push and like there's like this very I, I think that's probably what I like the most about it is that there's like this like very very thin gray line right we talked of, about it in our recent like live I don't yeah, know if yeah, you yeah, were yeah. watching I think, it. I, that, and that's literally what got me thinking about it because like I've I've had this conversation with my son is like there's very like yeah there's very thin like gray area of like what is like your limits and you being able to like push yeah. to a little bit more because obviously you have to push yourself to improve and get better but at the same time you don't want to fucking yeah you don't <laughs> go off and like break your neck yeah you know? we talked about it you 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 said you watched it i mean I'll, the beginners are scared to do anything crazy so that keeps them away from it the people that are more advanced have either worked their way there or have already crashed and hurt themselves so they know like what's dangerous and what their limits are but the people that are progressing that either aren't smart, haven't crashed hard yet, or just are like pushing a little bit too far than they should, those are the types of people that get hurt. And there's a lot of that at Horns Hill because, like I mentioned, like Ohio and the surrounding states don't have any riding like that. So people that come there are not used to it at all. So they, I mean, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. They don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. So they ended up getting hurt and nobody likes to see that happen. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate, but like it's, yeah, I, yeah, I, I think it's it's something to like, you know, for anybody who's like in that area, right? So you know, you have to be very cognizant of like what your what your limits are, and and you know, just push it ever so slightly to yeah. to get better. So I mean, as we start to wrap up, you know, I, you know, you, you talked about what you know what your plans are like moving forward, and you kind of mm -hmm. want to focus on keep doing what you're doing, and ultimately, you would love to have you know, somebody behind the scenes and kind of follow you guys around so that way you guys can be in the forefront. Um, so I guess with that being said, was there anything else that you kind of, you you think you you would like to talk about or, you know, or anything that you may want to know? I, I don't know. Like, I know we have we have a mutual friend with with Aiden and like... Although I've never met him. I just know who he is. <laughs> so I, and I think that's really cool too. And like, that's one of like the, the things that I love the most of, of like having just being on social media or like having a platform or like an outlet like this is that it allows the people like, especially like here in Ohio, like, you know, yeah. we're like in the small town in the Midwest. So everybody kind of knows everybody. And the, the, there's the, the separation is like very like close. And like a lot of people know somebody that knows somebody and they're all yeah. kind of intertwined. So like, I, I think it was cause even before you said anything, um, with the Aiden podcast, you know, like we've known each other, you know, we've been talking yeah. for a long time, but just seeing like, oh yeah, like I, you know, I'm familiar with his work and I know who he is and, you know, it's a lot of inspirations. So I, I think it's being cool. I, I think it's, it's, it's another uh, example of like what having platforms or like even just putting yourself out there, like on online that it allows you to connect with others and literally, you know, it's, I don't know, it, it's cool seeing, seeing those connections come to life. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Is there like anything... You think your listeners would like to know, like, content-wise? I don't know. No, I, I think, what are some of the biggest, like, I guess let's just wrap it up with this. Like, what has been the the biggest takeaway in in your experience, not only creating in creating content for yourself, growing the YouTube channel, now with, you know, the the, the freelance work that you do, what are some of the biggest takeaways you would say for somebody who is, yeah, trying to figure out, you know, because I feel like a lot of the a lot of the listeners are are very, you know, people that are in similar fashion of you, where they they're creating content for themselves, they're doing a lot of freelance work, they want to grow like an agency, they want to create, 
you know, like what's something that I guess a piece of advice that you would share for somebody? Because like I think you've you've put in a lot of work and and, and put it enough quality work that I think you have had some success and and even with you know with not only with going to youtube but just the quality of work that you put out so like i you know i i admire a lot of the work that you do and and yeah i just would like to hear your perspective on like what are some of the biggest things that you've learned over the last few years you know doing this i would say i mean my goal is always to have fun so i would say make sure you enjoy what you're doing don't i don't like to do things just for the money so like I would rather lose thousand two thousand dollars on a job because I wouldn't enjoy it. So do things that you enjoy and invest in yourself and invest in things that will make you money. So like for me that was camera gear. Uh, camera gear is expensive, yeah. but my whole thought process is like, okay, if shit hits the fan and it doesn't work out, camera gear also doesn't depreciate a lot. So I mean I can I know I like the important I. I'm very, I have a heavy like focus on quality and with that comes cost. So I knew like, yeah, I needed to spend a lot of money to get that quality that I was looking for. But if it didn't work out, like I thought it would, I could sell it and not lose a ton of money. Right. So investing in things like that rather than like going out and getting drunk at the bar every weekend or buying a bunch of clothes or a new car that you don't need. So yeah, I would say be smart with it and like invest in things that you think that you can make money with. And that, that was the big thing for me. And that's what has given me the confidence to spend a lot of money on things that have in turn now made me money. So that's like one of the biggest takeaways I would say, because I have a lot of people that reach out to me and they're like, Oh man, I like what you do. I'm trying to get into it. What camera should I buy? And I'm like, well, if you want me to be honest, this is what I would say, and I'll give them like a more budget friendly one too, because I I obviously didn't start out where I'm at now, but they'll even like they'll their response is like that even the budget one is too expensive, and I'm yeah. like, well, what are you actually trying to do here? Like, are you just seeing where I'm at and just like thinking like, oh, it must be nice to be there, or are you actually trying to get into it? Because if you're actually trying to get into it, then there's some risk involved with it. Like, you can't just get it. Like, you can't just get there. You got to take a little bit of a risk to get there yeah i feel like even with yeah i mean even if you were able to get like the the camera and like the lens and all that stuff like i feel like there's so much work that needs to be done for you to even get to that point where that where the like having that really does make a difference and i mean we talk a little bit about that um we talk a lot about that too like where gear matters up to a certain point and like yeah i I think that gear matters to a certain uh, gear matters obviously like you want to have the the, the right tools that you need but a lot of the time starting out like you just make do with whatever you can yeah whatever you can get by with because i I, there's so much for you to learn before you even get to that level where like that really makes a difference for sure like you can make it like you can make some good stuff with like the more budget-friendly stuff but like the stuff i have now just more so makes my life and my workflow easier so like a lot of the stuff I do, I take I pull clips for like Instagram Reels. Well, YouTube videos and other videos are horizontal and mm-hmm. Reels are vertical. So like one of my big things was like I needed a camera that could shoot really high quality 4K in up to 120 because I do a lot of slow mo too, so that I can take the 4K and crop to vertical. So. Yeah. That has been the most recent upgrade for me was getting a better camera body that can record 4K 120 so that I can uh, like multi-purpose like the all, footage, all yeah. the content. So that was the biggest thing for me was like getting to the point to where I could afford and like confidently spend the money on a better camera like that. So I'm at the point now where like I, I don't need anything crazier than that. But for two years, I made do with something that was cheaper. It's not cheap by any means, but it was cheaper. Yeah. So. Like, I, f- I feel like, yeah, that that's something, like, I always try to tell people. It's, like, I don't want to deter you from, like, getting it. But a lot of the times what you're what you're expecting what you, and what you're looking for, it's – you can attain that by getting the experience. And then yeah. eventually when you have the means, then, you know, yeah. make that jump or make that investment into – getting like the bigger and badder lens because a lot of times it doesn't really make a difference no you just got to use it a little bit differently so, so yeah. I, I guess with that being said i think it's a good way to wrap it up so yeah. like thank you for coming on yeah um, thank you for having me
could plug in your socials, your YouTube channel, social media, where, wherever you want people to find you. Yeah. So my Instagram is at Blake underscore Cherubini. That's C-H-E-R-U-B-I-N-I. YouTube is the Cherubinis. It's about the same way. It's my brother and I's YouTube channel. Um, Facebook, Blake Cherubini. Yeah. I think that's about it. Yeah. I don't think I have any other crazy socials. Check out Horn. Oh yeah, the Horns Hill. Horns Hill. Check out the Horns Hill Instagram, Horns Hill Facebook page. If you guys want a mountain bike and you're near Ohio, it's a good place to do it. So, Blake, thank you for coming on, and until next time. Yep. Thanks for having me. See you, everybody.